Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about one of the most important concepts in statistics in general and machine learning in particular is the concept of correlation, also known as R square. So I love this page called Spurious Correlations, you can visit that web page here. And this guy basically is collecting data sets and plotting those data sets that for some reason are correlated. So this is a nice example. So if you want to predict the number of suicides by hanging, strangulation and suffocation, you could use the US spending on science, space and technology because the correlation is 0 0.99. That means that 99% of the variability of, of the number of suicides is correlated with US spending. Of course, this is crazy. And this is one of the main messages of this video, that correlation is a measure of how one variable is explained by the other, but not causally, but just statistically. Here is another example. This is divorce rate in Maine and in the correlation with per capita consumption of margarine. And also I agree that margarine is disgusting. I don't know that margarine can explain the divorce rate. And actually the correlation is absolutely huge. So you're never going to find a correlation that large in, in any of the data sets in, in real problems, but this is 99% correlation. So what is R square? What does correlation mean exactly? So let's go back to our previous video when we, where we introduced this concept RSS, which is the residual sum of squares, or basically is the difference between the, the, the point in the data set and the prediction according to a model. This could be a linear model or not. So let's start with RSS, which is the residual sum of squares. And basically this is the difference between the, the value in the data set and the prediction according to a given model. In this case, we're just talking about linear regression. And let's compare this to this parameter. Uh, look at this. Uh, this is not the prediction. This is the mean value of y. And this is called traditionally in the statistics the variance of y. So essentially, when, when we are calculating this, we're comparing the, the observations with the mean value. So this is the variance with respect to the mean of the parameter without any consideration about the input. And here we're comparing the, the observation y with the predicted hot y, which is basically something that takes into account the effect of the predictor. So this is the variance with respect to the mean, and this is the variance with respect to the feed. So a good feed is something that in, whenever you draw this line, basically you're improving, you're reducing the overall length of these sticks. So what is R square? R square is one minus the ratio between those two things. So the, the, the variable in the numer numerator is the variance of the residuals and explained by the feed. So when we take uh, X as a predictor, how good is our variance or how the improvement is in our variance? And the, the number is the denominator is the variance of the data. Of course, if you have a, a very a perfect fit in which all the points uh, go into a straight line, there is no variance here because we can predict everything with X. So this would be zero and this would be simply one. And on the other hand, if including the, per the predictor X1 is unrelated to the variable Y, then this is going to be zero. And then uh, this is going to be, sorry, this is going to be one because they have the same variance with and without the X and this is going to be zero, okay? So if we multiply this parameter by 100, basically R squared is the percentage of explained variability in, uh, by in the inclusion of the parameter X1. We have to take into account that sometimes we could include uh, different parameters like the consumption of margarine or the number of uh, suicide by suffocation or the US spending in, in, in research and development. But basically this is like cheating because if we increase the number of parameters, there is a good chance, as we see before, that there are some correlation there. So sometimes instead of playing with this parameter, we are going to use the definition of adjusted R squared which is R square corrected by the number of predictors. So N is equals one in, in, the, in the case of the original regression. But if we include th these different predictors, we then we are going to rescale all of these da data points. Okay, let's see some examples. So let's take one data set. This is uh, the, the same data set that we've plotted before. And let's compute uh, I1 minus the mean value of the parameter. Note that we are not considering the, any value of x1 in, in this calculation. So this is simply the variance. I'm summing the difference square. Okay, so this is basically this formula. Now let's do some predictions. We have the fit according to the data. So this is hat y. And here basically we're comparing the value in the data set minus the prediction square. Okay, so this is this term. Let's compute R square by hand. So this is one minus the ratio of those variances and we obtain 0 0.66, okay? What if we use R to compute this for us? So if you take the summary of it, you can see that R square is the same. So basically we obtain the same numbers because we are doing the same calculation here. Uh, R square is adjusted R square is slightly different and this is because 
we are dividing essentially by this number here, but basically we have the same number. Okay, let's do another example. So let's see the three interpretations of the variance. So the first one is the percentage of explained variability. So let's take body mass and fat, body fat in, in the body. Here, if we take the regression, we can see that R square is 0.53. In, in, in common language, this means that 53% of your body fat can be explained with the body mass index alone. This is, doesn't sound that much, but it's not bad. Actually, take into account that body mass index is something that you can compute at home. You can take a scale and a ruler and you can weight yourself and measure your altitude, your, your height, and you can compute at home. So this is not bad. Okay. Another thing that is interesting in this analysis by R is significance. So I'm not going to take into account significance of the intercept. So most of the times the intercept is not very interpretable. Remember that here we are saying that some guy with weight equals zero, so you don't weight anything. Uh, basically, you still have a, a percentage of body fat of minus 28, so this is uh, nonsense. But this three asterisk means that this parameter, this slope, is very significant. And remember that we are using just one regressor here, so the R squared and the adjusted R squared are more or less the same. The second interpretation of R squared is the degree of linear association. So this is the most popular interpretation of R squared. So if R squared is 1, that means that you can explain Y to X perfectly, so there is no residuals there. If R squared is 0.8, so 80% is, uh, sorry, th the square root of R is 0.8, then you have some variability, but the trend is really good. Is if 0.4, then it's not that good. Zero is, mm, they are completely unrelated. And negative values means that increasing X decreases Y. Okay? Of course, if correlation is perfect, then uh, the correlation doesn't measure the slope, just the association between the parameters. So this is one perfect correlation. This is zero, no correlation at all. And this is minus one perfect correlation, but inverse correlation. And what if we have nonlinear features? So in this case, the correlation is zero, and that doesn't mean that we don't have any connection. So the association is actually pretty strong. So this W here, or this cycle here, is a pretty strong association, but it's not linear. So R square only measures linear association. You have to be careful because, uh, as I'm saying, so R square is a number that somehow summarizes the goodness of fit of this straight line. But you can have the same number with different uh, data sets, and in each case you have different interpretations. So let's take this example. So this is an, uh, an example that we've used before. So here we have like 66 R squared. It's pretty good. Uh, but you have the same correlation here. And here the residual is zero if you plot a uh, parabolic fit. But if you try to fit this to a straight line, then because of nonlinearity, you have the same value of R squared here and here. And of course, this is not the same interpretation. What about outliers? So here, if you remove this outlier, then the correlation would be perfect. But because you're including this data point, then you end up with the same R squared as in the, in the previous two examples. But of course, this is nonsense. Uh, the, this outlier cannot tell me anything that the, the, the straight line of the other parameters can tell. And this has to do with homocysticity. So here you have a lot of variance here, non-variance here, but of course this point is nonsense. If I remove this point, then I have any correlation between X4 and I4, because as you can see, all the points here are in the same line. So X4 is irrelevant to produce to predict Y4, but because of this data point, I have the same R square in all the cases. So again, be careful with the interpretation of one number. And the three, the third interpretation of R, and this is more, this is not so well known in, in the statistics, but this is really interesting. If we standardize the data, so if we remove, uh, we subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation, and you can do that with caret, and then we, we have a new data set, and this BMI.new, and we plot, the, the plot is more or less the same, as you can see here, but again, now the range is different. So instead of having a BMI between 20 and 30 or something like that, we have something which is centered at zero and it ranges between minus two standard deviations and two standard deviations. Okay, what if we take the linear regression of these new two parameters with this data set? We see something interesting. So the R squared is the same because changing the scale, changing the units doesn't change the regression. But what is interesting here is that if you take the slope of this regression and you square that, you end up with the same correlation. So this number is the same as this within the error of, of random errors. 
and this is the third interpretation. So if you standardize the input and the output, then the slope square is the same of R square. This is related with an interesting point, which is called regression towards the mean. It's a very known fact, and, and this was already predicted by, uh, by this mathematician Francis Galton in the, 20th cent in the 19th century. So he basically collected data from parents and sons, and, and he was interested in what happens if you take, for instance, males, and you try to plot what happens between the height of the father and the height of the son. And he, comp he uh, could do a linear regression, and he uh, uh, found somehow something interesting, is that the, the slope of this uh, correlation is 0.44. Why is this lower than 1? And this is a very simple explanation. If you take the mean and the standard deviation of both parameters, so the, alt the height of the father and the son, you could see that the mean is almost the same and the standard deviation is almost the same. That means that if I standardize those parameters, I'm going to take exactly the same plot. So this is the plot in the original unit, so this is inches actually, so height in inches. This is not very interesting, but okay. And if you standardize, you can see, again, okay, I'm going to move forward and backwards, you can see that we have the same plot. We are changing the scale, but not changing the graph. So remember the third interpretation, if I plot in, in, in the standardized parameters, then this slope is the, the correlation. So basically, this point, point, uh, point 0.44 that I have completed here, a square, would be the correlation, which in this case is 0.15. And that means that whenever I take uh, some, uh, some individual, for instance, with height 75 inches, which is 190 centimeters, this uh, slope means that the sun is going to be lower than 65. And if I do repeat the same thing with a guy which is a short, so 165 meters, then the sun is going to be taller. And this is called regression towards the mean. Because if I'm above the mean, because of this correlation being lower than 1, I'm going to end up uh, slightly closer to the mean. If I'm below the mean, I'm going to be closer to the mean, but above. And this is something that has been observed a lot of times. So the idea is the following, whenever you have two variables, which has the same mean and standard deviation, and it could be, for instance, the number of, I know, scores in a basketball match in one, in one match and the next one. So basically you're playing with the same variable, which is the number of scores. And the hot hand effect is that in, in, if in one match you score, let's say, I know, seven three-point shots, then probably in the next match you're going to perform poorly. And why is that? Because the slope, of this, of this graph is going to be lower than 1 because the correlation is lower than 1. And you have different names for that, so you can check that in Google and learn a little bit about more.